and uh, close to a billion dollars of that, a little bit over a billion dollars of that was in payments to providers and, and, and so forth for the services that were rendered. There's a, a small amount that was used for administration, and then, uh, then there was dollars that would be used for the uncompensated care program that I discussed uh, a little bit earlier. The, uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, is another uh, variable that we are, are, are dealing with. Um, um, the Affordable Care Act offers some significant challenges, but also some significant, op significant opportunities uh, for us. Uh, but there is a, uh, um, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to characterize how the legislature feels about it, uh, but they're not jumping up and down uh, supporting it from, from what I can, from what I can tell. But be that. Be that as it may, um, what, what I have to do uh, in my role as commissioner is I need to prepare for the fact that that is the law at, the, at this point. It still is the law. And come January 1 of 2014, uh, we, we project that the Medicaid program roles would grow by about 50,000 people because it, it Across the state, uh, and it goes from the, the it's, it's though it is primarily um, uh, that a, a population that we do not serve right now in the Medicaid program, which is able-bodied men. Uh, that, that again, it's above 133 percent of the federal poverty level. Uh, the uh, the other major storm cloud that we are dealing with is, again, I, I mentioned the federal government in terms of the issue of debt. One of the other areas that they are looking at are some major changes to the Medicaid program, and one of the areas that they have uh, floated as an idea is the idea of a block grant. Um, uh, Commissioner Solomon and I had had a conversation about that uh, back well, about a month or so ago. Um, because I had met with Congressman Ginta, uh, and uh, we had talked about um, uh, my my desire for recognizing that I know we're going to have fewer dollars. Uh, if we're going to have fewer dollars, give us greater flexibility. Uh, but that didn't translate into the fact that I support the idea of a block grant, uh, because the the block grant, um, depending upon how you calculate it. Uh, could have uh, and will have a significant impact on the amount of dollars that New Hampshire uh, receives. Um, and and as, the, as, the, as the term implies, once you use up those dollars, um, you're on your own. Um, uh, so uh, again, uh, the, the last thing on, uh, on storm clouds, uh, I sometimes feel like I'm a pilot navigating through one storm after another, uh, is the ongoing threat of litigation uh, on the part of uh, any number of different groups uh, that uh, will look at litigation as a way in which to um, make a change in policy. Um, so, so for the type of immediate impacts of that the budget um, has on us. Uh, there are several uh, areas. In the area of services, there are a number of reductions in rates that kind of cut across all the different populations. Um, the CHINS program, uh, which is Children in Need of Services program, um, was uh, significantly uh, curtailed. And there was over 400 kids that are in that program. Uh, uh, there was a reduction that was made by the governor's office. It was completely eliminated in the House budget, and then a portion of it was put back in the Senate phase of the budget, uh, which uh, deals with the, uh, some of the most troubled kids in that system. Um, the, there are, again, there's a range of things here. The congregate housing services, uh, the retired senior volunteer program, uh, the foster grandparent program. Uh, there were other reductions in social services block grants. Um, the uh, some case management for mid-level care. Um, 
uh, some of the diversion funding that was flowing through the counties uh, in order to uh, uh, in order to be able to keep kids out of uh, 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 into productive activities so that they don't default into the uh, juvenile justice system. Uh, those dollars were uh, were eliminated, uh, I believe, in, in its entirety. Uh, from a delivery system standpoint, the department is looking at uh, reducing its number of offices from uh, 12 down to 7 over the next two years. Uh, not as a way in which to be able to scale back in terms of the services, but to look at different ways in which to be able to go about uh, delivering services using some technology to do that. Uh, we have an obligation now under uh, under law to uh, reduce the number of contracts and to be able to save money in the area of contracts that we do uh, by doing some consolidations. And I emphasize consolidation of contracts. I don't mean necessarily consolidation of agencies because I know up in uh, up in this part that is a uh, that was an issue that was done. Uh, several years ago in our area agency system and uh, uh, things are still raw about, uh, about that. So we, I, I, I differentiate between making savings and consolidations of contracts as opposed to just saying agencies are going to get consolidated. Um, we are privatizing a couple of components within our operation. Uh, the Terrell House, which is a uh, substance abuse halfway house down in Manchester, our transitional housing program uh, at the New Hampshire Hospital. Uh, a portion of that will be privatized uh, uh, come the uh, beginning of the uh, of the year of, of the calendar year. Um, the uh, department will um, lose somewhere around 500 positions. There are 370 uh, positions that are abolished and another uh, roughly uh, 120 or so uh, layoffs uh, that are associated with the uh, closure of a unit within the New Hampshire Hospital, uh, the uh, privatizing of the transitional housing, as well as uh, the, uh, the Terrell House. Some of those people will get hired back in terms of the, of the 120 that are that are being laid off, uh, but there, there will still be a number of people that will be uh, that will be out. Um, there, the care management uh, or, or the managed care program uh, for the Medicaid population is probably uh, the most profound change that we will make to our health delivery system in the state. Uh, the New Hampshire uh, does and uses a significant amount of managed care techniques and tools uh, for our Medicaid program for the, really the low-income women and children of the TANF population, uh, where we do not use managed care in any uh, significant way uh, is in the area of services to the elderly, to the disabled, and to the mentally ill. Uh, those three populations are roughly 30% of the Medicaid population, but comprise um, better than 70% of all the spending that we do on services in the Medicaid, uh, in the Medicaid program. Um, the, also, uh, the reductions in the uh, uh, MQIP of the uh, Medicaid quality um, uh, insurance uh, incentive program, uh, this, these are monies that flow back to the counties, those who reduce by, I believe it was 25% uh, in, in that, that particular area. Uh, again, there are, uh, I have a, a, a spreadsheet um, of uh, a list of all the, all the reductions that goes, you know, five or six pages um, long, actually longer than that, uh, nine pages of uh, itemized reductions uh, that we have. Um, we, we will be going to the, uh, the legislature with our monthly dashboard, and I'll be doing uh, an update for the legislature on Friday. And uh, as we sit right now, we have 
uh, an obligation to uh, make reductions, uh, either that we, we see some shortfalls, there's some mandated uh, targeted reductions that we need to do, um, uh, that right now is about $25 million in the first year of the millennium, uh, and uh, $46 million in the second year of the millennium. And that's before that dish issue that I talked about, uh, as well as what other changes that are coming at the federal level. Clearly, clearly, all this is a um, um, it is a, uh, a a challenging, challenging uh, uh, period uh, for us. Uh, we're a mission-driven organization, and I dare say all the the different organizations with whom we work uh, share some semblance of that uh, mission, which is really making people healthier and independent. Uh, but this will be an extraordinary challenge to be able to navigate through, uh, through all, these, uh, all these reductions, all these changes. Uh, a lot of changes that I, I do believe are healthier and the right things to be able to do, but when, you, when you're trying to do that, at the same time you're making reductions, it is a significant amount of change that needs to happen very rapidly, and we're dealing with people. Uh, we're dealing with people's lives. Uh, and it's unlike um, if I'm in the private sector building widgets and I make a mistake in terms of building widgets, I can come back and have no harm done. You go back and you make some more widgets and you correct it and so forth. But here we're dealing with people's lives. Uh, and, and in some cases, uh, those that when they turn to the department, to the county, to, uh, to other areas that are uh, in a vulnerable state, they need they need uh, help, um, and at a time when there's a rising tide of, of, of uh, need, uh, the resources are going in the other the other direction. Of course. So, um, so I'll open it up for any type of questions, uh, or to, and to the extent that I can I can address them. I, I I will. If I cannot, I'll take a take a note and be able to get back to you with uh, any, any details. Given the fact that. New Hampshire now is going to be the fourth oldest state in population, um, and that the North Country is a little bit different than the southern part of the state. Uh, the big question is, what is going to be downshifted to the county? What are we going to have to be picking up? I, I, will, I will tell you that when we, by the way, everything that we presented to the House uh, and to the Senate in terms of uh, documents uh, and so forth, uh, we have put on the department's website, so you can you can see everything that we uh, that we presented to them. And one of the things that we we did uh, is to make sure that um, I, I tried to make the distinction, saying we we can cut the budget, but the spending is still going to manifest itself someplace. Um, and so that consequently, um, when we went to the House, um, the House phase of the budget said there is no way that the costs are not going to get shifted. The costs are going to get shifted down. It's going to shift to the family. It's going to shift to the community. It's going to shift to the cities and towns. And it's going to shift to the county. The, the issue is how quickly, how much. Um, and you know, there are a number of things that are in here that um, I dare say that you have the phenomenon of the unintended consequences. And because you can, you can for example, uh, congregate housing um, is a, a program that provides congregate housing supports to people who are just above the Medicaid level of eligibility from an income level. And they're living in a congregate housing setting in four settings throughout the state. And we provide various support services that are generally funded um, for, those, for those people. And it allows them to be able to stay in a congregate setting and they don't default into a higher cost <coughs> setting, uh, either nursing level or, or mid-level or, or, uh, or otherwise. And then go into the Medicaid program where now the state is going to have to stay in the county but will be will have a greater, a greater obligation. Um, that was uh, those services 